Good evening. I'm so nice to be here, part of the TEDx team for this first edition in Monaco. May I ask, how did you get involved with this? Because it's volunteer work, right? Yes, of course. I've been involved very casually because I didn't know about TEDx in Monte Carlo. And the organizer contacted me to make a conference, a little activity in the morning, just before the TEDx conferences, about the Monegasque language, the history and the culture of Monaco, which is my country. And would you mind just sharing a tiny bit about the Monegasque language? What's it made up from the history? Yes, of course. So the Monegasque language, at first sight, may look like a mix of Genovese and Occitan language. But, but we don't have to say so, because it's the usual idea of the language. But the Monegasque and even the linguists like to say that the Monegasque is a real language, an entire language, which comes from the Latin language and we has um, its own evolution with the main influences of the Genovese who settled in Monaco in the 12th and 13th century. So um, then it has many evolution and the grammar is much like the Italian language and uh, I can say some words in Monegasque if you want. Oh, please. Excellent. So um, I can say you, of course, a sentence you may have heard um, in the soccer parties like Dage Munegu, which means Go Monaco, to encourage a team. You may have heard Viva o Principu for the National Day. And um, for instance, if you are at the market of La Condamine, where all the Monegasque rush to make, uh, so to buy some stuffs to eat, some flowers, whatever, or just to meet, uh, you can say Mangerei un pezzo de toca, un topo de soca, or Amir ma piège i barbajon, to translate. I would like to eat a piece of soca, which is a local, uh, typical plate of Monaco, a dish of Monaco, or um, I like the barbajon, which is the very, very typical food of here. Outstanding. May I ask you some of the facts that you might have shared today? You had, a, you had an activity? Yes. Um, I made an activity, of course, for people who were not from Monaco. So. The purpose was to show in one hour the main facts of history. So it was not something very, very pushed in the details, but a panorama of all the history. The settling of the Monegasque here and then the main prince, such as the prince uh, Charles III, who created Monte Carlo, uh, the casino, the SBM, and so on. The prince Albert I, who is um, at the origin of the science of oceanography, the prince René III, um, who made all this construction, evolution of the country. So we talk about architecture, Belle Epoque architecture, and the new buildings, uh, who are very renowned in Monaco. And of course, the prince Albert II, our current prince, and his environmental causes, his foundation, and so on. So um, the topic was just at the beginning to show little films that I made over Monaco with the preconceived ideas, the yacht, the cars, the parties, the glamour, and then to show the traditions, the language, and another face of Monaco, much more local, and really how the Monegasque live and how the prince is close, and yes, very nice to his subject. So to show all the faces, and then after I made learn to people some sentences in Monegasque. Excellent. Can I ask you one of the sentences yes. you taught them? Yes. Um, so I taught them some proverbs and some sentences such as uh, I tried to make it fun. So um, I said, of course, how to introduce yourself. So if I have to introduce myself, I would say Bonjour, nous, Mecha Moulea Calori. Go 24 anni et son studentessa en doctorat de linguistique et de dialectologie. So, to conclude, I'm uh, hello, my name is Lea Calori, I'm 24 years old, and I'm a PhD student in linguistics and didactics. So, just how to introduce yourself, and then some funny sentences, such as, um, for instance, um, Oh, can I say this? Yes. Um, 
um, don't be. It's better to be born uh, poor and lucky than rich and totally dumb. So it's a proverb monégasque. So if I say it in monégasque, aimé yuna chez poveru et fortunao, kériku et abelinao. Abelinao is a very funny sentence, a word in monégasque. So I told them such very funny words like that because it may look like some insults, injury, but in Monegasque it doesn't have such a pejorative character. You may say some words like that, but for fun and which are like little nicknames and not very yes, nasty against yeah. people. Yeah. So I tell them funny things like that. And of course a little bit of grammar and lexic. <laughs> I recently did the, the casino the historical tour myself. Yes, yes. And one of the things that I've, besides the interior design, the decorating, the, all the artists yeah. that they brought in to do the inside and the exterior. Yeah. Um, but one of the things financially that I found fascinating was the casino was so successful within a very short period of time yeah. Yeah. that they uh, that the Monegas then was given the privilege of not paying personal yes. taxes. Yeah. The, the reason I bring this up is the innovation of Monegas. Yeah. It's something very, very interesting and that I wanted to highlight in this conference, in this activity to the people because today, of course, you see a lot of works of restructuration of the country. You can see what's going on in progress everywhere in the country, whether around the beach, um, around the hospital, in the center of Monte Carlo. And some people say it's a pity that they destroy old things. It's true in a sense, but it's the dilemma in Monaco. We still fight to conserve the tradition and some piece of our, our history in the Belle Epoque still, and we still have a lot of monuments like that. So it's important and we do our best to conserve it. And then we have still to look ahead and to make new construction, such as the new extension over the sea, the new island, and in this conference, I tried to show, to show both and how we could link both because the two are important and it's the same with learning a local language. We have to know before where we come from, our roots, our culture, tradition, to be proud of it, to then, of course, learn from the other, learn from other country, other culture, and then build, build and go ahead. So. That's a huge challenge that Monaco tries to still go on and uh, the innovation has a very important place here in the country. We have um, over 140 nationalities represented here. So it's both like a village, like a little country where all the Monegas know each other and at the same time a very cosmopolitan place where you can meet people from all over the world every, every day meet new people so it's very interesting and I think that the real um, very real uh, rich part of Monaco it's the multicultural aspects and the fact that we sustain our tradition and then look ahead look ahead to see the progress so um, I'll just sign off with one final question yeah. you, when you listen to the TED talks today was there yeah. any one that struck you where you said Oh, I hadn't thought about that, or that's my favorite. Yes, they were all very, very interesting. And what I thought amazing in this conference is that they are short talks and that you can pass from many, many emotions during all the day. Um, I've been laughing from the presentation um, of some person, and I've been crying about the presentation for the migrants, the video projection because it was very, very hard to, to hear it in this way. And I think it raised awareness on this problem, this global problem. Um, I've been, of course, uh, fascinated by the presentation of Alexia Barrier, of Louis Weisenberg, that is an artist that I adore, and I was very happy to see him on the scene, on stage. Um, I love all TED Talks. I love the one talking about art and shops. It was very interesting and it's been linked to the museum, the Oceanographic Museum, which is very important in Monaco because it embodies science and progress and even tradition. And it shows that 
sometimes you start searching about a subject in a science without seeing the results suddenly. You have to, you know, set the first steps and then the further generation see the results. And that's very important and I guess I guess that's the ideas that the Prince Albert II tried to convey with the um, electronic um, electronic motorsports and uh, planes, whatever, to, to try to start by project steps by steps and, you know, as the American ID, even if we fail, then continuing and then we have a huge success like uh, with Venturi, with all the with the plane and so on. So it's very beautiful to see projects such as TEDx uh, coming to Monte Carlo and raising awareness on many subjects and so on. Well, we certainly look forward to doing more activities and to next year. Yes, I, I wait uh, for next year and I've been very, very proud and I'm very thankful for, for all the team to have called me to be part of this amazing project and I wish you all the success we can wish to such an amazing team. Thank you very much.